Hey Midwest Conference fans, I'm Peyton Tabor here on Midwest Conference Media Day. Today I am joined with Knox College head football coach, Coach Aaron Willett. Coach, thanks so much for taking the time to meet with me. I appreciate your time and your willingness to do this for us. Yeah. So Coach, last year you and your guys finished 5-5 five and five overall. Can you talk to me a, a little bit about some of the highlights of the season? Oh, it, it was a great step for our program. I think, you know, all my guys would probably say was, was that fifth win. Um, you know, from year one to year two, I think we did some of the things that we needed to do, um, beat some of the teams that we, you know, felt like we should beat um, and, and things. But uh, picking up the fifth win, you know, at Cornell in a, in a very cold and rainy day, kind of the way that we did, um, the, the energy that was around that was, was really, really big for our guys. And I think that kind of um, is, is, you know, parlayed into our offseason and really allowed us to, to kind of continue to grow as a team off of that experience where we had to play, you know, team football that day. And, needed to make some stops. We had to pick up a, a big fourth down, and so that was a very big um, point in the season and, and big, I think, momentum point for us in, in my time back now um, at, at Knox College. Coach, what has been uh, some of your focuses this offseason to help your program take that next step forward? I, I try to not make things too complicated. Um, you know, football is not rocket science, and, and I am a big believer in execution. Um, and, and controlling what we can control and just trying to get our guys to be a, a player-led culture, um, continuing for those guys to, to see that what they do for one another on a daily basis is really where we're going to end up. It's, it's less about, you know, what's going on in the conference, less about, you know, anybody else or, or trends or things like that. It's, it's are we being our best self, you know, on a daily basis and, and trying to point those guys in the situations where, hey, we capitalized on that today or, or hey, maybe we didn't. Um, and, and just making sure that we're in a mindset where, where we're in charge uh, and in control of, of what we can be. Hmm. Coach, who are some guys, either on offense or defense or both, that you want to see take that next step this season to help um, your team be even more successful? Well, I, on the offensive side, um, you know, with what we do in the option game and in the run, we're always going to be uh, trying to establish the, the run game. But, you know, I'm looking for, for some guys to step up in the pass game. Uh, I'm looking for, for our quarterback, Cale Williams, to, to become uh, and continue to become a, a more efficient passer so that way we can present something else. Um, but we've got some experience on the line of scrimmage, um, quarterback's back. Um, but we've got a, a running back who kind of flexes out as a receiver at times um, and, and slides in, and, and Owen Beaver, um, who I think has got the potential to, to have a really, really good year, and, and some of that comes with more experience. Some of it comes with health, and, and he's an option guy back from high school, so he kind of really understands what we're trying to do and mm -hmm. excited for those guys. But uh, everything that we're going to do you know, on the offensive side is going to be about, um, yes, there's experience on the line of scrimmage, but it's going to be about those guys continuing to play as a, as a unit. Um, and then on the defensive side, you know, defensive line is deep for us, um, bringing back a fifth-year guy and, and TJ Neals. Um, so that's going to be big. Um, got to replace a, a linebacker. I think you know, we've got a young man, Colton Krutzinger is a name. You know, that um, played a little bit last year, um, you know, had some, some injury stuff in there, but I, I'm excited for him. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just it's going to take all of us uh, maximizing, you know, our, our roster size um, to, to do what we need to do to win more football games this year. Yeah. You've touched on a lot of guys on your roster, but is there, is there a guy that maybe we don't know by name or by staff that you're really looking forward to, to watch you make a big difference this year? Um, I think, you know, on the defensive side, you know, at, at the linebacker spot, um, you know, Davis Broombaugh is a, a guy that, that kind of was maybe overshadowed um, by an all-conference performer in Ian Rao who graduated. So I think his, you know, leadership and his ability to, to, you know, take that next step along with Colton at the inside backer spot, um, you know, a guy that, that really falls off on the defensive side that I thought just had a heck of a year. Um, even statistically, I think, you know, almost – uh, nine, nine and a half sacks last year is John Sarich, defensive lineman, um, real good football player. And um, I, I expect him to continue to be kind of the, the anchor of the defensive line. Um, you know, and then on the offensive line, we've got a young guy um, who's turning into an old guy. We've got, we returned four starters in that. But, uh, you know, Esteban Alvarez has got to step in and, and be a full-time player for us and um, be that, that fifth guy, you know, as we continue to develop depth on the offensive line. Coach, in this day and age when teams are spreading the ball out and throwing it around, you've really stayed true to the one game um, through the triple option, which is also very unique here in the Midwest Conference. So I'm kind of curious, how did you make that philosophical decision, and what advantages does that give you? Um, you know, so w way back, um, I had the opportunity to kind of 
play in it um, and then coach in it and, and then continue to coach in it in my time up at Concordia. So it's kind of, you know, who I am. And um, I see triple option football uh, every Saturday when I turn on um, Division One games. Uh, inside zone bubble screen, that's triple option. Um, you know, we run a lot of uh, GT counter trace scheme and, and you throw a read on that. Um, and, and now, you know, people say it's triple, but I see that, you know, on, on Sundays um, and, and things like that. But um, getting our guys to understand uh, that it's about distributing the ball where we need it um, and, and still being able to, to utilize the, the receivers, the pass game, the most types of things. But it just kind of fits into the mantra of who we are. We, we need to be a blue collar team. Um, our roster size isn't as you know, large as, as some other schools in the conference. Um, as we build this program, and, and we've got to hang our hat on something and definitely being physical um, at the point of attack on the offensive and defense side of the ball and, and running the ball is, is something that uh, that I've taken a lot of pride in over the years, and I think our guys have really, you know, bought in and invested, and, and I want to give kudos, you know, as we talk on the offensive side, you know, to the guys that play out on the edge of receiver for us. They really understand, you know, what we do, and they're willing to work their tails off in the run game, too. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's so great to hear. Mm-hmm. What has been your favorite part about being back at your alma Ah, uh, man, um, obviously the, the family side of things, um, the, the family within the alumni network, um, you know, the, the people that I was connected to before that I played with, um, the alumni that have, have reached out and, and really supported me as I get going and the more guys that I, I get back to campus is huge. Um, being from the local area down by Galesburg anyway, um, obviously the family atmosphere is nice, um, but when it comes to the, the program, I think one of the best things is really off the field football wise. Um, I wasn't the best student at Knox College. Um, I, I had a, a first year that took me a little while to learn. Um, my GPA was was better by the time I left. Um, and, and we talk about player development and, and things at Knox. We talk about, you know, getting out of survival mode and getting into thrive mode. Um, I spent quite a bit of time um, as a student uh, in survival mode. So getting back um, and trying to get our guys into thrive mode and really capitalizing on the things that Knox has to offer um, it's students and in our, in our campus population as far as career center stuff and those other things that maybe I didn't get to soon enough um, that I really wish maybe I had, had succeeded a little bit more earlier on to get into. Um, so pushing our guys in that aspect I think is, is one of the, the bigger things because it is Division three. Um, the likelihood that one of my guys is going to play in the NFL is, is not. So I've got to prepare them, you know, the academics and the career placement stuff. And, and there's some things that I really do uh, and that we try to do that, that I, I I didn't quite get to in my career as I was figuring out how to be a, be a good student. And so I, I take a lot of pride in getting our guys in, in those situations. Yeah. Coach, last season your team had two more wins than in the previous season. And so how are you going to continue that momentum into this season? Because it's very obvious that you're building a strong foundation. We just need to do do ourselves. I know it comes off coaching cliche, but, but we've got to control what we can control. Um, you know, I, I talk to our guys straight up. I want to win a Midwest Conference Championship. Like, this is America. There are winners and losers, and, and losing is not very fun, right? And, and you're playing to be the best. Um, but also, you know, we need to be um, self-aware. It's an adult skill set that I talk to our guys about, too. And, and so um, as we continue to grow, you know, roster size and, and wins and losses and, and abilities and, and those types of things, we need to make sure we're maximizing who we are. Um, and, and I trust that if we are giving our best effort, you know, on a regular basis that we're going to take those strides. So to put a number on it, couldn't, couldn't tell you that. But I want to make sure that we get the most um, out of our guys, which is going to end up with the most that we can potentially win. Um, and, and that's going to be where, where I want to be at the end of the year. Coach, when you watch films, film of other, team, other teams in the conference, is there a player that you enjoy watching just as a fan? Oh, man. Um, I don't know if it's, it's one player um, and, and getting the opportunity to be around the coaches and things. Um, you know, we had an opportunity to speak with officials today about, you know, rule changes and things. And we don't have as many, you know, defensive pass interferences and, and things like that. We're just out, you know, in the lobby kind of talking to guys. Um, what I think is a lot of fun to watch is this conference's desire to establish the run game across the board, all of us. And we, we all do it a little bit different. Um, and, and some are maybe more efficient in the pass game and, and things like that. But just that, um, that, that we're not all hurry up and we're not all five wide and we're not all, you know, as many places as we possibly can. That there's a, a concerted effort, I think, by a large majority of this conference um, to establish the run game in, in some capacity. Um, and as a, a former running back myself with a couple of brothers that were offensive linemen and, and 
having that stint uh, when I was at Concordia coaching on the line of scrimmage. I really like tight shot football. Um, I do, and, and so getting able to see guys pull and, and, and block on the line of scrimmage, I take. Yeah, I really enjoy watching those guys for across the conference establish a run game. Yeah, coach. Last question I have for you today, and it's actually from Frank Rossi, who's the co-host of D three Football in the Huddle. So he wants to know. As an alum of Knox College that came back to be the head coach, it's clear that you've stabilized the team and continue to build each year. So now, heading into your third year, what are your expectations for the team? Because alumni will likely place more expectations on you to achieve a winning record in 2023 and beyond. And even going off that, is the team's progress on schedule based on what your own plan was when you took the helm back in 2021? Yeah, I, I, and... Similar to, to before, I think it's it's making sure that we get the most out of what we have to, to offer. Um, I, I tell our guys all the time, and, and, and I was hired um, on this concept, right, first year head coach, and, and obviously being an alum coming back, that kind of plays into to the opportunity to, to come back and, and get the job. Um, but I got hired because uh, and Daniel Earl hired me and, and talked about I need to be an overachiever, um, you know, with where we were at and, and everything like that. Um, figure out a way to overachieve, and I, I talk to our guys about that. And I think um, if we go out and we maximize what we do, then then we're going to take that that step. And um, the alumni engagement's been huge. And, and yeah, I think you know there's there's that pressure, there's that hey, what does this look like? Those types of things. Um, but there's some honest conversation goes back and forth with those guys that engage with me, you know, on a regular basis too. Um, because what I am trying to build, to, to Frank's point, is I'm trying to build something that's sustainable. You know, and and you know, does what does that look like? Yes, this year, you know, in growth and, and win loss record and, and things like that. Um, but in, in roster size, right? We're we're bigger than we were, you know, when I started, and that's continued to grow. And you know, what does that look like next year and two more years down the road? Is that going to continue to grow? And then with that, in, in on the field success, do we overachieve? And then we continue to make this climb. But um, I want to build something that's sustainable for myself, you know, as the head coach at my alma mater. Uh, with my family there, um, or if, if down the road I'm, I'm not there, I want it to be something that, you know, other people look at and say, man, you can really do some things there. And so just um, building a, a sustainable program comes back to, and I've said it multiple times, and it's probably a broken record, but we, we've got to maximize who we are. We, we've got to get our absolute best. This is a certain group of people um, that are on this team, and if we get that best, then that's what we've got um, to give, and, and we got to make sure that we hit that on a daily basis. Well, that's all I have for you today, Coach. I really appreciate you taking the time, and I wish you the very best of luck this season. Thanks so much. I, I appreciate your efforts and, uh, and willingness to do this for us.